This is Twit. I started reading this, and actually, I kind of th- Lisa was there when I was started it. I read it out loud, and I kind of threw the Kindle a- across the room when I. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> Scott J. Shapiro. He is. Um, He's been a developer. He, he, you know, he's not ignorant of technology. He's a technologist, but he's be, can't become a philosopher of law. Uh, and, but he did write a new book called "Fancy Bear Goes Fishing: The Dark History of the Information Age in Five Extraordinary Hacks." It starts with the first worm ever, uh, which uh, you may remember happened in the, uh, I think, in the eighties. With uh, oh, now I've forgotten his name. He went on to be a co-founder of Y Combinator, mm. um, but he uh, the Morris Worm it was called Robert Tappan Morris Jr. Uh, he, the, there is an excerpt which I really enjoyed uh, of uh, the chapter on Fancy Bear. Let me see where that is because that I would recommend everybody read because that's a that is a wild story. Uh, but there's an interesting premise in this that I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm not sure I uh, agree with. And it's kind of, he's, you know, he's a philosopher. You know how philosophers like to argue from first principles and build up a, a story. The, this, the IEEE spectrum has the strange story of the teams behind the Mirai botnet. I would I say this is well worth reading. This was a, a a botnet that we talked about, that, and you remember, Stacy, because it took over IoT devices, it took over routers, uh, and was a it was a nightmare. It was all because <laughs> a, a student at Rutgers <laughs> didn't like the fact that uh, uh, upper class students got priority to enroll in computer science electives. <laughs> <laughs> he was pissed, so he DDoSed the entire forty thousand. Bots, primarily in Eastern Europe and China, unleashed them on Rutgers uh, computers, <laughs> and his so his classmates couldn't get through to register. He, he did it again the next semester, and in fact, he said the reason I can do this is because Rutgers has a really inferior DDoS protection company. Mm. They should use mine. He has a DDoS. Did he protect- graduate? Uh, he dropped out. Um, That's normally how that story goes, and was yeah. caught. We talked a lot about it when he was caught. He was from uh, Fanwood. I don't know. You know where that is in New Jersey? Oh, I know. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right on the train line into New York. Yeah. 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 Uh, he was, uh, you know, kind of one of those kids. A lot of uh, computer kids are like this who was super smart, but it was ADHD and didn't do well in school, probably because he was too smart. Uh, but uh, as usual, I got this too. When I was a kid, the teachers attributed it to laziness, right. apathy. You're not... Living up to your potential, Leo. Uh, didn't help, so he sought refuge in computers, taught himself how to code when he was 12. Um, he started playing Minecraft in ninth grade, started hosting servers. He was DDoSed. One of his Minecraft servers was DDoSed. That's how he learned about uh, distributed denial of service attacks. So he studied them, started writing them himself, <laughs> got into Rutgers for computer science, um, but ended up, uh, as you know, uh, DDoSing Rutgers. Eventually, got caught by the FBI because uh, he it spread. I mean, he he basically was the first to create DDoS as a service. He was renting his DDoS capability to other people. What was that? Oops. Low impact. There was some. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just had a weird brain thought about DDoSing tools. <laughs> <laughs> there was one that had a popular name. Um, so he he actually got in a fight. There was a gang fight between uh, other DDoS gangs, Lizard Squad and VDOS. Uh, they created something called Poodle Corp. <laughs> they could do 400 gigabits a second, which is a lot of uh, bandwidth to throw at any uh, server. Uh, so uh, this kid decided, I'm going to take down Poodle Corp. In any event... Um, he got caught by the uh, FBI. The FBI's Anchorage, Alaska, and New Haven cyber units first shut down Poodle Corp. And, uh, and then the Mirai group, uh, who survived the, you know, in this gang war, uh, started attacking. And uh, the special agent, uh, Peterson, said, oh, now that he's taken down Poodle Corp, let's go after the Mirai botnet. They did catch him. Mm. Uh, but what's interesting is he did not serve time. He pled guilty. 
He was indicted twice, once in New Jersey for his attack on Rutgers, once in Alaska for the Mirai botnet. Uh, violations of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, facing up to 10 years in federal prison. Uh, he pled guilty, expressed remorse for his actions. He apologized for the harm he'd caused businesses, Rutgers, the faculty, his fellow students. DOJ said, we're not going to ask for jail time. Uh, but maybe they could help us out. <laughs> the government said, uh, we're going to give you five years probation, 2,500 hours of community service, but that community service should include continued work with the FBI. They had already logged 1,000 hours helping the FBI hunt and shut down Mirai copycats. They contributed to more than a dozen law enforcement and research efforts. In one instance... The uh, founders of the Mirai botnet, there were three of them, Paras, Josiah, and Dalton, helped stopping the nation state, a nation state hacking group. They helped the FBI prevent DDoS attacks aimed at disrupting Christmas holiday shopping. No jail time, just community service. The most poignant moment, this is all from the book, uh, the most poignant moments in the hearing were Paras and Dalton singling out for praise the person who caught them. Paras... This Rutgers kid said, two years ago when I first met Special Agent Elliot Peterson, I was an arrogant fool, <laughs> believing that somehow I was untouchable. When I met him in person for the second time, he told me something you will ne I will never forget. You're in a hole right now. It's time you stop digging. Mm. Mm. It's, an it's a great story. And as people who, from the outside, we covered this with the Security Now, and I think on this show too, and, and so watching this from the outside to actually read what's inside. But this book has more going on with it, and this is where I, why I'm bringing it into the class today. Uh, because... <laughs> is it going to be on the final? I'd like to share this with the class. No, I'm not the professor. I'm just a student. Maestro. Uh, uh, there's an interview with him uh, in uh, Ars Technica, and he, he basically his premise is because these are Turing machines, uh, you know. What a, I'll let Stacy explain what a Turing machine is, named after uh, Alan Turing, who, by the way, described how computers should work before there even was an existing one. It was all a mental exercise for him, but he was right. Wow. Um, because they're Turing machines, and that any computer that you might use is general enough to 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 be Turing, what they call Turing complete. It's impossible to protect them. Any Turing complete device will always be subject to hacking. Yes. Does that this make is sense? true. You think so? Yeah. Yes. It is impossible. It is impossible to have a secure computer. It is impossible to have true security because either you're going to be hacked like electronically, physically, like via those channels, or you're going to be social engineered because most people are hackable. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My Chromebook. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Chromebook's <laughs> great. Everyone, but you Jeff can still would be like to issue a challenge. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you can still be socially engineered. <laughs> well, and you can, Chromebook extend, Chrome extensions. I've said before, Chromebooks are unhackable. And people have said, no, 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 of course they can be hacked. Of course they can, but they do a lot to prevent it. Nobody yeah. wants to bother. They slow it down a little bit. Right. Don't, Every company out there should recognize that they are going to get hacked. Yeah. You should obviously look for the ways that you're most vulnerable and, you know, figure that out. And most of it will be to social engineering attacks, in yeah. quite honesty. Yep. And then figure out how, figure out strategies for mitigating the damage. Maybe that's backups if you're worried about ransomware. Maybe it's keeping some of your most valuable data, like, not on the internet. I mean, there's there's lots of options, but but yeah, no computer is ever going to be secure. Yeah. Um, he writes in his uh, conclusion, his, which is called The Death of Solutionism. Uh, he, basically, uh, solutionism is uh, the idea that there's a solution, uh, that the technology can solve our problems, right? That the that there is a solution to any Starting issue. with the problems it creates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, he writes that, uh, Scott writes, that solutionism is ubiquitous in cybersecurity. Every cybersecurity firm promises its technology will keep your data safe. Uh, but he says... It I think this guy has a load of crap on that front. Most cybersecurity experts I talk to are like, look, you're going to get hacked. Right. 
you need to like you need to monitor. Nobody's tell. I mean, OK, I obviously have not heard from every single cybersecurity vendor out there, but I have never met a cybersecurity vendor who is like this will solve everything. Yeah. They're like, this will solve this segment of the problem and be monitored. Uh, anyway, I, I think, you know, a, a good book um, raising really interesting questions and certainly uh, fascinating stories about five uh, hacks that you and I all covered or paid attention to as they were happening. Maybe not the Robert Morris worm because that was so far so long ago, but it's a great story because it's the first Internet virus. Um, and I think, OK, so you, you concur. And I, OK, I'm glad to hear you say that, that because these are. In most courses, he writes, I teach the, at least one student remains skeptical throughout the entire semester, refusing to buy the intellectual goods I've been selling. Uh, my guess is you are similarly skeptical. So he goes through the Turing proof at the in the in the epilogue, the very end uh, and uh, and explains why. Um, because it's a general computer, it will always be attackable. Finally convinced the student says, actually, I have one more question. Now that the course is over, what happened to Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan? I say that I have to run. <laughs> <laughs> but the student can take my course next semester to find out. <laughs> wow. In the words of P.T. Barnum, always leave him wanting more. Anyway, I recommend it. Fancy Bear Goes Fishing, Scott Shapiro. It's challenging. I mean, like I said, I was going, no, what is he saying? Because it's got a very philosopher's point of view uh, to, you know, this this question of are computers uh, ever going to be secure? But if you're in the business, if you cover this, if you're interested, if you use computers, very much. It's got a great title. Yeah. Dr. Drew in the yeah. Discord found that tool that I was thinking of off the top of my head. I was saying Loic. And it's it low orbit ion cannon. Oh yeah, that's I think like, we talked about been that on like um, a gazillion years, right? Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about that on Security Now. Yeah, I don't remember the whole whole story. Low orbit that. ion cannon is an open source network stress testing and DDoS application. Interesting. C sharp. Nice. Crowdsourced DDoS, basically. Yeah. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.